The Linda Lindas, they're here performing on the show. They got an album coming out. All the members of the band are still in school. <laughs> I mean, that was my dream. <laughs> that was it. What was your first band like, Reg? What was the first band you were in? Uh, we were called the Autumn Asylum. Uh-huh. And uh, we were <laughs> basically, we just kind of did direct, pretty close ripoffs of our influences. So it was like a mixture of like Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Cure, um, and oh, uh, a little bit of a. Oh, in Living Color. Living okay. Color. Living right. Color. Not in Living Color, but yeah, Living Color. Living Color, yeah, 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 yeah. But it was fun. I played key bass and I sang. Oh, key bass. Key bass. Cabase. Cabase. Yeah. Hey, Carl, what was the first band you were in? What was the first band you were in called? I don't remember. You don't remember your first... It was like a first, thousand years ago. <laughs> your first band. You were in a funny name band. What was yeah, yours? I don't want to go oh, on about Nice turnaround there, Hagar. <laughs> I was in some pretty big bands back in the day. No, you had a good name. Yeah, we were big in the <laughs> High Wycombe area. <laughs> I was in three bands. <laughs> the first band we were called... We were a boy band. And we were called Full Frontal. <laughs> <laughs> we never actually played a show or wrote a song. We just walked around saying we were a band. <laughs> then I was in a band called, another boy band, called Insatiable. Wow, that's new. Because you just can't get enough. Was it spelled? Correct. Was it spelled funny or no, just regular? No, we, 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 were, we were a proper band. Oh, <laughs> sick. Right, 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 right. We were a cool band, Insatiable. And then I was in a band called Twice Shy. <laughs> which was only for the reason that we could call our first album Once Bitten. And that was mostly Queen covers. It was all Queen covers, but we didn't have a guitar player. <laughs> which... Which does make Queen difficult to do. <laughs> when you're going like... <laughs> kind of sounded like you were playing the Game of Thrones theme just then. Is that... No, that's the, in, in Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh. I'm still hearing Game of Thrones. Yeah, and I'm hearing Star Trek. Well, then they've ripped it off from Queen. Yeah. Well, look, we could do this all day. <laughs> but it's that time. It's the time you've all been waiting for, America. It's the news. <laughs> And today was Groundhog Day, one of, let's be honest, the most ridiculous days on the American calendar. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to explain what happened today. You can watch for yourselves. With my shadow I have cast, then a long, lustrous six more weeks of winter. <laughs> six more weeks. Six more weeks. Six more weeks. Six more... I mean, you can't argue with science. <laughs> now, this was news to me. I, I think I'd forgotten that the whole event takes place in Pennsylvania uh, on something called Gobbler's Knob. Yep. yep. That's where it happens. Gobbler's yep. Knob. Punxsutawney. Do you think they started this tradition with the groundhog and everything because they were like, we've got to distract people from the name Gobbler's Knob? <laughs> Let's just tell everyone we got a magic groundhog. That'll do it. <laughs> Gobbler's Knob. I'm amazed we can even say that on CBS. <laughs> we should have a little Gobbler's Knob here at the, uh, at the Late Late Show. We should, have a, we, should have a, we should have an area that we call, like a designated place, and we just call it Gobbler's Knob. <laughs> can you say Knob Gobbler? Can you, I don't know, can you say Knob Gobbler? You probably can't say Knob Gobbler, can you? <laughs> Rob, can you say Knob Gobbler? <laughs> Can you say knob gobbler? I honestly don't know. I think I want to say that's all right. Knob gobbler. Feels knob good. gobbler. Feels good. Or knob goblin. In the, in this in this instance, yeah. I mean, we're not showing anything along with it. We're just saying knob gobbler. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's often the issue, isn't it? We wouldn't be able to say gobbler's knob if there was a picture of a. <laughs> 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 what I call a. <laughs> 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 Moving on. 
the federal government has just hit an alarming new milestone. For the first time ever, the United States national debt has surpassed $30 trillion, which is incredibly depressing. <laughs> you know what might lift your spirits, America? A little retail therapy, baby. <laughs> My man. This comes out to $90,000 of debt for every American. And now seems like the perfect time to remind you that I, James Corden, am British. <laughs> it's a huge number, 30 trillion. And apparently, most of that debt stems from a VHS copy of Who Framed Roger Rabbit that the United States rented from China in 1991. <laughs> Did everybody hear about this? The Washington football team finally announced their new name this morning. They're now called the Washington Commanders. I mean, call them whatever you want. They haven't been able to command a winning season since Obama was in office. <laughs> to give you an idea of how fans reacted shortly after the announcement, this is true, the word terrible trended on Twitter, which is surprising, <laughs> considering how Twitter is normally so welcoming and so positive. <laughs> you know what I think they should have done? They just should have done what Kanye did and changed their name from Washington football team to what? <laughs> I think it's a good opportunity to maybe Cobra Commander could be the mascot. Cobra Commander. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or what if, what if they went with the Washington Commandos? I and like then, that. And the whole thing is when you go to a Washington game, you don't wear underwear and you just wave it above your head. Done. And the mascot, the mascot could just be a completely naked man, just like, whee! The Washington Commandos. I love that. Think of the branding opportunities. That's what they should have gone with. Great. Let's go, Commando. Let's go, Commando. And everyone's like, let's do it. Yeah! <laughs> this was an odd story. <laughs> A company in Sweden <laughs> has announced plans for an unusual solution to littering. They're going to train crows to pick up cigarette butts. Yes. Yeah. There's no way this doesn't lead to armies of crows flying around just ripping <laughs> cigarettes out of people's mouths. <laughs> I love that instead of teaching people to be responsible citizens, we're like, nah, let's train the crows to pick up after <laughs> us. Let's do that. Pretty amazing. This could lead to much cleaner cities as well as, let's be honest, much cooler looking crows. <laughs> Is there an animal we could train around the office? It'd be great to get Louie helping out a little bit. <laughs> no chance. Zero. No chance. Never lifted a finger in his life. Agreed. <laughs> now, uh, hey, Nate Fernald's birthday today, everybody. <laughs> Happy birthday, Nate. <laughs> Happy birthday. What's that? Did you get everything your heart desired today? Everything, everything I've ever needed. Are you happy to share this with the nation? How old are you today, Nate? Uh, I'll share it with the nation. Uh, I'm, I'm 38 years old. 38 years old. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. But I look 28 and I feel 62. So. <laughs> well, happy birthday, Nate. We absolutely you. love you. <laughs> Here's a story that caught our eye. A decommissioned British Airways jet has just been transformed into a unique event space that you can rent out at one UK airport. Renting out the party plane costs $1,300 an hour. Here it is here. Look at that. Now, unless it flies, you can't really call it a party plane. It's just a tube, isn't it? <laughs> it's a really inconveniently located party tube. <laughs> Where did you have it? Oh, in a party tube. <laughs> Took an hour and a half to get there. <laughs> Although now, you know, when you're brutally hungover at work, you can just say it's jet lag. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever want to do that. Would you want to go, go on a party plane that doesn't move? No, no, absolutely not. All I want to do on a plane is cry while watching my best friend's wedding and then fall asleep. <laughs> That's basically it. Did you, did you cry watching any movies, movies, Reg? What's your go-to cry movie? You know, oh, you know what? Actually, the scene out of um, Good Will Hunting. Yeah. You know, when Robin Williams keeps repeating a phrase it's over and over. It's not your fault. 
Yes. Oh my Not God. I lost that. I just yeah. lost it. It was just like, that was the first time I ever experienced like two men in that situation and one guy's kind of being tough and then he just breaks through yeah. and just keeps nailing it and finally he just yeah. I was like man that's it's crazy beautiful what's the one I tell you what makes me cry what's the one where Macaulay Culkin gets stung by bees my, my girl. girl oh my god oh god he needs his glasses <laughs> he can't see can without I, his glasses can I be honest it's actually making me quite emotional <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't that film is so beautiful I haven't thought about that in a long time. Yeah, dude, me neither. I <laughs> 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 That actually has made me quite emotional. I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. Just you saying he needs his glasses is really <laughs> got to me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and has everybody heard about this? The government of Australia has just backed a four-year project to test out a new type of fertiliser in city parks, human urine. Yeah. Yes. This was plan number one. I don't even want to tell you about plan number two. <laughs> They're testing human urine to fertilise city parks, or as the guy walking home from the bar put it, just leave me alone, I'm gardening. <laughs> How does this work? I could, if, if human urine was good fertiliser for plants, London would look like this. <laughs> and finally, a woman has gone viral after she got this tattoo of Rocket the Raccoon. You know, the Marvel character from Guardians of the Galaxy. She got that on her arm and, uh, and apparently she was very happy with the tattoo until later when she noticed that Rocket's kneecap made it look like she had a tattoo of a... Well, see if you can see it for yourself. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse. It could have looked like a ridiculous talking raccoon from a comic book. <laughs> rocket the raccoon. I mean, she got a rocket, all right. <laughs> Can we see it again? <laughs> she should take that to Gobbler's Knob and see what happens. <laughs> now, I just want to be clear with the sensors here at CBS that is a kneecap. <laughs> no need to blur it, it's a kneecap. It's the world's first fully circumcised kneecap. <laughs> That's the news, we'll be right back, everybody.